Let's call the meeting to order. Welcome everybody. It seems that we have a nice little uh, gallery over here, so I'll let the people that are in the gallery kind of introduce themselves so we know kind of who's in the room. But we can start, I guess, from this end and work our way down to our staff members. So, I guess that means me. So yeah. I'm sure you all know Chris. Yeah, I know Chris. Okay. Uh, Richard Tush. Okay. Janet Emerson. Okay. Michael Downing. Ray Town Online. Robbie Tabs. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Steve Myers. Steve Myers, how are you? Good. Mark Moore, Alderman Ward 3. Good. Eric Team in here. Jason Green. Thank you. Hey, Furman. Okay. Sandy Hey, Turner. All right. Dave. All right. Dave. All right. Does everyone that's in the audience have to know who everybody on this side of the gallery is? So no. Good? No? Okay. I will start with myself. I am George Mitchell. I'm the president at the moment uh, of the park board. And I will start with Mike and go on to Mike. Michelle Sykes. Daniel Lance. Karen Sykes. Nancy Dale. And then we have a couple other uh, members that are not here right now. I think they're running us a little late. Uh, we have Terry Landers and we also have uh, Pat Jackson. So that makes it work. Okay. So for those that are here on the board, um, has anyone had a chance to review the minutes from last month's meeting? Yes. I have a couple things. Okay. Um, I've shown here where it talks about um, new business, the uh, business plan that we have for the year, and it talks about um, the business plan that we have for the super splash, the list of recommendations, and the cost. And that got put in the minutes, but there was also discussion about how we're going to pay for it with the possible talking about a sales tax increase to fund it, and that's not in the minutes. There was that, and then also uh, toward the end of the meeting, I requested that we talk about the pros and cons of trying to get a sales tax implemented at this meeting. Last month, I also sent an email, but uh, I mentioned it at the meeting, and that didn't make it in. I'd like for that. I'd make a motion to add those to the meeting. Any motion to make a second? A second. Any discussion? Then it's usually on our case things that are voted on. Discussions are more highlight, so it's I think typically that, we just the important stuff is what actually gets voted on. Just that one. I think the thing when um have the issue is what's going to be the next one. Question. If not, we can go ahead and take that information to the vote. Okay. All those in favor of adding the minutes in, in addition to the minutes, say aye. Aye. Those opposed? Yes. I'm sure that is passed. Mary, I can just add those to the minutes and send the minute, minute, minutes out. Yes, ma'am. Under superintendent, um, it was Thank you. 
some time ago on some of these, but I just want to start off by thinking Chris Collins of the right town broke the eagle, because if it wasn't for an article he wrote on June the 19th, citizens of right town might not know about some of the conversations this board is having. Um, I don't know about the rest of my fellow citizens, including my board members, because you are fellow citizens, uh, that are in attendance tonight, but this board needs to um, assume some responsibility and trying to be a little bit more transparent about what is being covered at these meetings. For again, if it wasn't for Chris, a lot of us wouldn't know. And I know the Board of Aldermen, they post their stuff online. You can go online and read it. Um, other boards that I'm aware of post on their online or even on their doors. So anything to better communicate with the citizens, especially considering the article in the uh, June 9th. Uh, paper in also regards is um, the overall lack of responsibility to the citizens uh, concerning the condition of and you guys were talking about doing something with the aquatic stuff of uh, the uh, June uh, 4th uh, fishing derby uh, if any of you attended you would have heard one common theme from those fishing and that is what's with all the moss have this plan forever, what's with all the moss? Very common thing, if you had attended and spoken to the crowd, you would have heard that. And that's a beautiful part. And it's a great way to show off our uh, park system to the citizens and to our neighboring guests that we're attending the event. Um, in addition, and I think that's why so many are here tonight, is the master plan and as it relates to Super Splash. But if you go online, the master plan's not there. There's no details. Matter of fact, the web's so outdated, it talks about you guys making the decision whether or not you're even going to open Super Splash this year. Just to give you a little hint of how outdated the website is. Again, which website are you referring to? The parks. The parks website. And again, just transparency, um, the concern of, of what is going on with. Uh, with the parks, especially after reading the article, and you know, it sounds like there's work underway. It's been very hush hush to potentially bring forward to us voters somewhere around four to five million dollar bond issue, and that is risky and reckless, considering that Super Splash historically has been losing around ten thousand dollars. I mean, a hundred thousand dollars a year. This year is probably going to be. And the Board of Aldermen had to bail you guys out a year or two ago, or it would have been closed then. Wow. Wow. Is, uh, so they didn't bail you guys out? No, no, no. I'm telling you, is that okay. the third thing? Yeah. Okay. Um, you need to begin? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Your name Richard Tush. Richard. Gosh, well, I just want to make sure that I can address at least some of those things. Um, communication of, of minutes and, and transparency, I, I agree with you, probably we can do a better job of getting those minutes up um, on the city's website, since that's where all the other boards' minutes are, things like that, we can work on that. Um, condition of the Derby Moss, uh, or the Derby and then the Moss that was in the pool, that was something that was discussed at our last meeting, um, and there was a really good explanation by a superintendent of the problem that we have with moss, especially when it happens to be sunny, uh, because they happen to thrive on the sun, and then the cost of shocking it and, and kind of treating it. So, um, and, right, we're about to kill it with a fish while we try to shock it too fast. So, it's, it's a delicate process, and we do know we, we probably should address that. So, we discussed that in our last meeting also. Um, in regards to the master plan, and um, we can definitely update the park's website, but the master plan really hasn't been much less. The master plan has been something that's been a discussion um, for about a little over a year. Um, the part of the master plan was not only were surveys gone out to a sample of the city, um, there was also open forums to kind of get some feedback from the citizens of Raytown about what they would like to do. So 
that one just super splash. And I think that's the mis representation that's kind of a slap people like to pull on that is they always want to focus on super splash. But if you want to look at the parts system, there are eight other parts that we have to take into account. Super splash happens to get the, the main focus because it happens to be on the news a lot. But there are eight other parts that we're looking at as a whole. So super splash has to be just one of those. So we just make sure that our master plan is looking at all the parts. Um, and the reason that it has the ability to public yet is because it has been voted on. That's probably a lot of you guys are here right now to hear about that voted on. But so um, once the master plan is voted and approved upon by this board, we then make a, a presentation to the board of aldermen to say this is what our plan looks like, and here's some things we're going to do. We're going to take a year, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully that addresses the same things that you brought to us. If it doesn't, then let me know. Okay. Anything else? Super splash. Which it is. Sorry, thank you, Mike. Um, I'll do one more issue about super splash is that we haven't really discussed bringing a bond of four point five or whatever the total amount was. Those are again wasn't the option. It is a option that we need to look at if we decide to deal with that pool. If that's what the citizens of Raytown want, if that if discussion comes up, and that's what we got from our study. So those are the things that we're going to kind of look at. But no means that we voted upon that we're going to start going the streets and getting a bond issue as of last month. We haven't even decided that. That so again is discussion and speculation. There was nothing voted upon last month. Again, in the minutes that says anything about a four point five bond issue that we're going to but do to make a point of order, if I might. And thank you. Is didn't I understand that the consulting firm who sent out that questionnaire came back with one simple answer, a recommendation, and their recommendation was to close, which was, I've heard, is the general consensus from the respondents. Actually, the respondents didn't say close it. The respondents said we would like a pool. The respondents said that if we would like to either keep the pool as it is or do something better with it, but the respondents like to have a pool. Uh, what we're going to do with that pool you still have to decide. If it's going to be financially stable, that's fine. But the other thing I want to make sure people stop looking at Super Splash as a business by itself. Those that heyday of Super Splash making all this money and funding other programs are gone. Um, there is no park system in, I don't think, the country that says we're going to have a pool open to make money for our city. No one does. They, they all kind of have a, a formula that says we're going to agree to what's going to be our agreed upon cost recovery for the year. And like you didn't have to mention, Super Splash is doing much better this year than it was last year, obviously. Um, and then the year that we were um, bailed out by the city, um, it was legal to remember that we did close the pool. We agreed to close the pool because it was not financially sound. Some members of the board said, hey, we've already lost the Y. I think it might be a good, a bad look for us to have no pool in Raytown. So then we went and said, hey, if that's what you guys like to do, we need to get in bed together and not just leave a park board out there high and dry. I think I've so, at least, and again, thank you for your time, uh, demonstrated we're a 10 square mile city. Mm -hmm. And that with you guys not getting the information back out through the web, whether it's your own or the city, people become misinformed by what is said okay. around town. So we can definitely do that. Do me a favor. If you wouldn't mind, Terry, can you be my timekeeper to make sure that my five minutes don't turn to 20? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> That's all I do. Thank you. Yes, yes sir. Uh, I'll try to be succinct. Okay. You mentioned the website, and I'd like to ask a question. A couple of years back, I noticed there was a line item for the uh, website with an outside firm. Is there still a line item? And it was a few hundred dollars. It was enough that it was more than just putting up a website for you. I'm out there that looked like there was enough there that it should include maintenance or updates or something. And I'm just curious, are you still paying for an outside company to do a website? If so, how much and what's in, supposedly included in that service? Thank you. Um, those numbers I don't have in front of me right now. Um, but as soon as I get that number in front of me, I can definitely answer that question for you. Send that to editor at raytownonline.com. Will do. Yes, Alderman. Neighbors. 
Yes, that was us. That's probably about a quarter of my eyes. So. <laughs> uh, when I attended the, the meeting where they presented the different things that could be done with Super Scratch, it was either close it or spend two to seven million dollars to reduce it. Um, can you hear you? Can you? Oh, I can't hear you. When I attended the meeting where they were doing the uh, presentation, the company was doing the presentation, uh, They their recommendation, recommendations was either to close the pool or spend between two and seven million dollars different things that they brought forward to make it suitable. But they showed all kinds of problems that people don't see with pipes rusting and all of that. And so that's my concern because it will take an awfully lot of money to bring it up to where it needs to be. And my second question would be, um, when this survey was sent out to people, was it people that attended Super Splash or was it Raytown residents? So the first question we had was <coughs> about the pool and the money for the pool. Right. Okay. And those different options of where are with those options, or what's your exact question about the pool? Oh, I just, I just know that what they wanted to bring it up to being usable again, I feel was pretty steep, and our other parks are, are beautiful. And, and you do a beautiful job with that, but the Super Splash is still, to me, a big problem because it's not, shall I say, sound enough to be having people come to it because it's going to quit it's one of those days. It's not unsafe. They've told me. <coughs> well, they the show case. pictures, I mean, pictures of all of the, the things that were wrong with it. But I don't think there's anything unsafe. Is there nothing unsafe? Uh, we would hope there would not be. No, they, they, I was asking that, that was like meeting, yes. five meetings ago when we first started seeing that. And as long as it's safe, if there are things they can fix, and they're, they're sorry, I'm talking to, I probably should raise my hand or something. But there's, there's things that they said, we can fix this without it making five million or ten million over here. This we can fix to make it look better and just make it still pretty small or close this off and do lap pools and things everybody wants. There's different things. It's not we're going to spend. We never voted. We took a vote. We never voted on the one over here. We voted on making it all safe and make it better looking because people still want to just look at it. More cost effective. The most cost effective is what we actually, I think, voted on. Yeah, I think their uh, most cost effective was what two million dollars. As there opposed to the money. Right. The second question, Jen, all of that was. was okay. The, the second question was. When the survey was sent, sent out, was it sent to Raytown residents or to people that came to the pool? Okay. Um, to answer your first question, as far as the pool options, I think the, the range actually was close to three million, um, between three and seven million. Um, but it's very much similar to what you guys have at the 87th Street Bridge right now, or the 81st Street Bridge, where um, it's necessary fixes, but nothing really sexy about it. But it's mandatory, and it probably needs to be done if you want to continue to use, in our case, that, that pool, or in their case, the street. Um, so there are some things that we kind of have to look at as far as different options, and those are the things that we're going to kind of use and look at uh, as part of the plan. Nor do we ever, as a board, want to sacrifice one park at the cost of the eight others. So what continues to happen is things, some of the comments is, again, we're going to focus solely on Super Splash, but not the other parks. So I want to make sure that when we talk about our master plan as a park department, that we're looking at not just the park that's flying north of Super Splash, but all the way down to Little Blue Trace, all the way down, and all the parks in between. So there's that. Second question is for your survey. The survey did not go to pool attendees. They actually went to Raytown residents, because that doesn't make sense, because they're the ones that kind of are funding the pool, as you're all just saying, and they're probably being smart. Well, I believe that 15% of Raytown residents use the pool the rest of them are out from outside the city. 17% of them, of course, two years. Mm -hmm. But again, if you have a public yeah, service, if you have a public right. service, the public, whether it happens to be Raytown or Lee Summit or Leavenworth or whoever, they decide they want to come use your pool. And they pay it for it just like everyone else that lives in Raytown. They come enjoy our pool and be happy. Right? 
glad to see. Alvin Myers, you said you had a question. Well, I got a, a, a good comment, favorable. Right. That's probably a good thing right now. Uh, your parks are looking fantastic. The maintenance folks, wonderful. And I've actually had a couple people, as well as myself, comment about how wonderful the medians look. And the flowers at Gregory are just phenomenal, to the point where I somebody had to beep at me tonight or the other day because I was looking at the flowers. And the light had changed, so so bravo in that regard. I mean, that's that's what one of the strengths in our city is definitely our park system. Um, I, I did have a question regarding the budget that was presented to us back last year. Budget there was one hundred fifty thousand dollars earmarked for improvements to Super Splash. And I understand that that at some point was scrapped. And I guess if you identified one hundred fifty thousand dollars worth of needs in the budget, what the process decision process was to forgo that and just kind of that. Yeah, you have the question. I mean, it was presented that you need it, and then now they're not. So. So when you're talking about the budget, the $150,000, um, that money was spent. We spent enough money to keep the pool open and functional. Um, What's that now? We, we use the money. The 150000 We use all 150000 Um But we use the money to keep the pool safe. We open the money. We use the money to keep the pool, to keep the pool open. Um, but there were some things that we would like to have done that were going to cost more than $150,000. We decided we really wanted our wish list of things we really want to do. So we have to sacrifice some of those things for right now, get the pool open. Um, right now, it seems to be working very well for us. The pool is having a spectacular year. Um, and so we'll see as we put together our next budget process what we're going to do going forward. Hopefully, the plans will help us with that. So. <coughs> Yes, ma'am. I have one for somebody else that can be here this evening. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> but the one I'm concerned about is I was under the impression from conversations and what I had with the article in the paper that we you're looking at a sales tax increase to pay for this. Okay. Um, and Raytown already is so close to 10 percent if it isn't already. It is, but I can't hear you. I said I don't think it is, but it is pretty damn close. Sorry, it's nine three. Quarters. It's about eight, <laughs> nine three quarters. It's the highest in Eastern Jackson County suburb. Exactly. Yeah. We don't need to be paying any more. I don't understand why this. Why you can't? If you're going to do this for um, the city, doesn't need to be paying out this kind of money when. The biggest majority of people are the Marietown residents. You need to be charging them more, just like Lisa and all of the surrounding areas do. And all you have to do is call and find out how they do it. It can't be that hard. Okay. And um, I will fight the tax increase. We don't need to be paying any more in taxes. Um, and a friend of mine wanted to know, during the good years, when you were making money, why was not the repairs and the upgrades made then? Okay. So we were talking about repairs and upgrades back then. They were made. Um, unfortunately, you had a pool that was built around, help me with? 63. 63. Um, and they made some upgrades back in, I was in the mid-80s? 90, in the 90s. 90s. So then we have a pool, it's one of the oldest pools in the area. So back in its heyday, if you're the only pool in most of the county, everyone's going to come to your pool. But as times change and we get things like Coco Keys and the Bay and other communities have to build their community pools and then I can go to Walmart and blow the pool in my backyard for about $300 and I don't need to spend money in it, super splash. So what happens is that money that you have coming in it's not as much as so. Those are some of the things that we kind of run into in the last several years. We start looking at improvements, looking as, as far as how can we make something new in the park? How can we fix this filter or these pipes or things like that? But 
when you still try to look at the prices of inflation from back in 63, 91, and now 2016, those prices are just a little off. Um, so things that were probably cost us maybe you know, $50,000 to put in years ago is probably closer to $120,000 now. Uh, we're, part of the things we we're looking at, some of the attraction that we could bring in. Wouldn't it be really cool if we could have this? He said, yeah, it would, but it would cost you this much money. Okay, it may not be an option. So those are things that we're kind of looking at as, as, a, as a board. When we look at the pool, when we look at all the parts, what can we do to take some of our money from you guys as citizens and make it the best park system as a whole? If that involves Super Splash, that will involve Super Splash, we'll do what we have to do. If it doesn't involve Super Splash, it doesn't involve take care of the rest of the parks. What about the sales tax? Sales tax, I mean, that's something that's been on the table. I mean, not even us as a board, but also people at the city are also looking about ways to make money for their projects. So, I mean, sure, good. I know, and I have to have been on the city council, so I know about that, but I also know the citizens are not very happy about the amount of sales tax we're paying them now. The most sure the city's a uh, city's a great town. And there's a couple things that we're not happy about, but we're all not going to get along, I guess. Before I get to your, should oh. I get a comment? I'm sorry. Can I get your name? I'm sorry. Cindy. Okay, thank you. I just thought it would be a, a valid point to uh, let them know how much it did cost the taxpayers for our new tax boards that we cannot guarantee how many retail residents are using. That was done by grant. So we didn't take that to the taxpayers, so that was how much? Yeah, so we've had some other questions. Okay, Mr. Hartwell, I have a question uh, not just about the sewer spread, because I also wonder, you know, since the great town citizens pay a tax, the out of town, citizens come in and use a facility. Uh, Super Splash, you pay the same whether you're in town or out of town. So you're getting a better deal than the person in town. Is, uh, shelter rentals and stuff, you know, parks and all that, is that one rate for everybody in town or out of town? So that's another case where we pay some taxes plus the same amount as somebody from out of town to use a shelter or something else. Right. And so I can see where it's Great town citizens would be like, uh, they're not getting the same. And I can probably even equate that to the same thing that a lot of people from uh, Jackson County and Johnson County feel the same way when it comes to the Chiefs and Royal Stadiums. Uh, we have people that come from Nebraska and other parts of Missouri and other parts of Kansas to enjoy the park. Uh, but they also, we all get a flat ticket price that we all pay for. So, but why? Jackson County residents are allowed to buy tickets early. They are. And get premium seating and preferential treatment. So, I mean, it's not the same thing. Similar. I didn't say it was the same thing. Don't misquote me. Like I said, it's very similar. Similar. But similar, but not the same. Similar. I mean, so. And honestly, our board has discussed that multiple times. And the biggest issue is who counts and who doesn't. Because a good portion of our Raytown yeah. residents. Uh, and the difference between the school district boundary lines and our city boundary lines are great. So do we cut out the Kansas City people whose kids go to our Raytown schools? Yeah. And I can argue that because the property tax value is, you guys need to get I, educated. I'm just and stating that we when you make that statement, it. then you yeah. need to get educated. And the property tax value is set at City Hall on our property tax. And there is a portion of that, and probably one of them can quote the actual percent that actually then goes to you guys. It's that percentage that has several of us in this room worked up tonight because that's where we are subsidizing them. When Lee Summit charges even by the day a different price. And I've had this conversation with Mr. Boji. Well, like Michelle said, we as a board have discussed that numerous times, but then how do you count it? How do you try to figure it out? Um, There's a price because that is just mission fee is and you know, raise the price for people that aren't there they won't come. We want people, we want as many people to come through the gates to offset 
because okay. and we so wrestled with all the can. same things you're saying we've discussed for years of boy we'd like and I agree with you. I'd like to have a letter more rate for everything from Ray County people because of all your arguments you've made on Super Splash in particular when you're trying to generate people coming through the gates and paying the fee if you we've looked at all of the local community ones swimming pools and what they charge. We don't want to be the highest price pool because that means we'll never get anybody from out of town. Now, if we want to have just Raytown people, it's going to cost even more money and it'll be an even bigger loser. So I haven't figured out in my mind how to balance those two things. Especially when you're talking about different attractions that certain right. other newer pools in those other communities have. I mean, you're talking about Adventure Oasis and the they have a lazy river. That's a big draw. Lazy River and Super Splash is going to be a couple million dollars to bet in. So, I mean, those are things that we've kind of toyed around with. Like, how do you raise prices if you haven't brought in a new attraction? How do you raise prices? And how do you track resident versus non-resident? Yes, the other communities are doing that, but, you know, that's the formula that we haven't really put together yet. Hopefully we will soon. Yes. I'll be brief. I'm mostly here just to listen and educate myself further, but first I just want to say thank you all for your service. I know, honestly tiring all of us but it'd be in other places right now <laughs> having some of these discussions but it's, it's all for the betterment of the city um i wasn't going to ask a question at all but richard asked something that i wanted to get clarification on so i'm sort of curious um when he said that about the master plan the survey i guess i don't know if it was necessarily a survey but it was i guess they offered four options correct am i correct in saying yes. that well i got the master plan here and it, it's say that they recommend pursuit of either option C or D. Option C talks about demolition of, of the farm super splash over it also talking about and converting it to another park to meet a park in the north the north part of Raytown. And option D was just trying to I guess sell it. This is demolition hunting for demolition, sell the property and use the proceeds to acquire new part land elsewhere. So I mean, it says right here pretty clear that, I'm, I'm just clarifying, because I heard some comments earlier that said that, I wrote this down, that, that the survey, that the master plan did not recommend that. And that's what I see. If there's any clarification on that, I'd, I'd love some. Please. Because I have it right here. Who's the presentation? You've got some grand implications. brought back. Okay. It says April 11th, 2016. Yeah, that's a couple of iterations ago in our discussions. Okay, well, yeah, but I mean, this, but this was their recommendation, though, correct? Yeah. That's what it says here, at least. I, I'm just curious. So, that's all. I just want some clarification if possible. That was their original recommendation. That was the original that recommendation night. that night? Yeah. Okay. So the original one. That's the changed since then, apparently. Okay. Mine's not a question. I, if it's not appropriate, since he couldn't make it to the meeting, I won't relay his message. But Josh Green had a message. Let me convey his thoughts. Um, he was much in line with what Mr. Green was just asking about. Um, he's uncertain as to what we spent the money on the consulting firm for. If we weren't going to take the recommendation that they gave us when they did all the information, they compiled all the information. Nothing has changed in that information other than them coming and presenting it to this board. And then after that board, for some reason, they've changed their recommendation. <laughs> and he, he's, he's complete. He, right now, he, in his words, is he feels like all of this money spent on the master plan was a waste of money, a waste of taxpayer dollars, if you're not going to take the consulting firm's recommendation. If you're going to make up your own mind on what everybody's going to do with the, with the pool, then you shouldn't have hired a, a consulting firm. You should have hired an engineering firm told them what you wanted, and just done. Those are the words of Josh. I don't know. They were for by the, the missing greens. <laughs> well, I'll take a stab at it. You can help me out here. This is a process. Part of the process is throw things out and see what happens and see what the pushback is. And I probably was one of the ones who pushed back the most in that April meeting. In that they had met with uh, some of the city administration and appointed 
headed out to the Zoo Sultan. You could have saved the plane ride in to go visit with him. So no matter what you said, his idea is to close Super Smash. And that's not why we targeted him. We wanted to plan for a whole park system, including Super Splash, that will give us direction to go forward in the future. Because quite frankly, this city has not got a good record of doing strategic planning. And as far as the other Mr. Green's comments, uh, if you look at the document that we've got here to talk about, there's a lot of beyond just Super Splash. And as a board, it's my opinion, where is the, 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 our job is to provide recreational uh, activities for the citizenry. We're not additional. We're not the business of closing off opportunities. And I get, I get a real sense that from the audience that you don't think Super Splash has a great town residents going to. Yes, it does. And the majority of the people that go to it are your neighbors. A couple, three years ago, we had a, a kerfuffle about a director of aquatics left. And we had to jump in with an outsourcing with a group to come manage it. The Board of Aldermen at that time were inundated by citizens of the Board of Aldermen meetings complaining about all of this. And, you know, they're very we close it, there's going to be pushback. Maybe everybody in this room wants to do it, but my opinion, you know, we're right out in front of here, is I would like some help from the citizenry of fixing a lot of things that we could do in our park system, including super schools. And I think we owe it to them to provide that to them. Thank you. I make my own personal comment just now. When it's my turn, it's not my turn. I'll just say that. Well, no, you will. I just don't want to say when it's not my turn. I'll let you. Yeah. All right. Well, I just want to point out that right here, the most important thing for the master plan to address is to understand the needs of the community and adjust what the department offers accordingly. We looked at the numbers. They show that 17% of residents have been to the pool in two years, 83% of the residents, the community that we have to understand their needs. 83% have not been. We know that we live in an aging community who do not attend children's water parks. We talk about opportunities for recreation. What you're not talking about is all of the opportunity costs that you are missing by funding Super Splash and all of the things that you could be doing to better address the aging population and the needs of this community with the money that you're actually spending on Super Splash. And that money could possibly be used elsewhere. Super Splash has a component that addresses the aging uh, folks. I, you know, I go up, I'm one of the aging folks, by the way. This morning I'm on the treadmill or on the exercise of the bike up to the, the wellness center, and there's a steady parade of my peeps heading through the locker room going to that warm water pool. And guess what? At Super Splash, we have people that come to Super Splash and uh, do for the same kind of thing. Now, obviously, we're not going to be year round with that, but uh, there's a component of Super Splash that fits that as well. I'd like to comment on what you said earlier because I didn't totally agree with everything that Terry had said in his reply. Um, the consultant, sorry. Um, Said I, I wanted to reply to the question he had last, as I didn't agree with Terry on everything that he had said. Um, the consulting firm had come in and they said they talked to, they, they, I believe they came here first and they sent them to talk to the finance people at City Hall. And after they talked to them, that's when they came back with that recommendation that, that you and Jason had brought up about uh, recommending options. C and D to either close it and turn it into another kind of park or close it and sell the property. Um, and they brought it before the board. The board uh, decided they didn't want to pursue those two options as, or as uh, you know, those were the two top uh, directions that they wanted to go. The board decided 
that they wanted them to go back and come up with some different options, and that's what the consulting firm did. Right, but they didn't—they only presented the same details. They didn't have any options for any. They didn't give us any quote, quote by quote. So, yeah, well, I think the confusion is, and then we'll kind of move on to the next person, is that you're referring to a PowerPoint that was done in April, and then in May there was a presentation. They came to that presentation and were like, guys, there's, yeah. we're, why do you guys only have these options? We're trying to figure out where, where you turn from. Because before you had this core, now you're just locked on these two. And that's when they informed us that we went and visited with the finance director, and they clearly told us that there's no money coming for the pool. Okay, well, that's not an option. I don't want to close my options. I want to know what my, all my options are. So if I think if I was just to present two options to the, the citizens, it would be a slanted option. So it, the other two options are like, falling yeah. off the table. They're not even being discussed. Which other two options C are you talking e. about? No, they're not. I know. No, I'm not saying they haven't fallen off. Yeah. It's, it's all part of the plan. Now, you guys may not have a current copy of the plan, but the plan and the strategic implementation plan that we have as a board gives us some freedom and some leeway to say, hey, here's the consultant's recommendations. He says, if you guys decide to go down this path, it's going to cost you this much money, and you might have to think about how you're going to do that. But we still need some leeway as a board to say, guys, if you want to go down this path, then we have to figure out how we're going to do that, or we shut it down and then look at options to say, how much is it going to cost to demolish Super Splash? How much is it going to cost at that time here to secure it and keep it safe to prevent people from going in there and costing the citizens money when they have to dive in the diving board with no water and they break their neck because kids do stuff stuff. Those are all the things that we have to continue to look at. So just to have two options, I think, is, is a slant. I just want to give them, again, going back to this thing about transparency, here's all the options. You guys just do what you, this is what our options can be, and let's go from there. So, just, the last one, then we're going to move on to this. Just their lies and darn lies and their statistics. I cleaned that up a little. Yes. 17% use the pool. How many percent use Smith Minor Park. How many percent I use, the only park I ever have gone to is Kanegi, okay? So, zero percent use on Smith Minor. Zero percent on, so, you have different segments of the population using different facilities and some not using any facilities at all. That's kind of what we are talking about when we look at the parts as a whole. Super Splash has to be, again, the big target or as some people in this room refer to it as an albatross. But what happens is if that's the only one you're going to continue to hold stats on, that one gets the most attention. But like you just brought up, the one sitting at Minor Smith or Southwood or Canadian or anything like that, where the tickets to counter just count people as they come in and out of the parking lot. We only do that super splurge. The only thing that may come close to that would be BMX when they happen to have events. So again, when we're looking at a park system, we need to look at all of our parks as a, as a whole. So. That's that. Yes. Some of the statistics from the surveys that they did do talk about usage of all the parks, but obviously we're not talking about that. The other thing I'd just like to point out, since everyone seems to be against Super Splash, how many, what's the population of our teenagers that have jobs because Super Splash is open? And what other Raytown businesses offer that? How many other of our parks offer a good, job for the summer for our teenagers so that they're not tearing up the other parks. So, I mean, that, those are all good points, and I think what we've done is hopefully we address some of the, the questions and concerns that you guys have and hopefully kind of clear up some of the misnomers or, or whatever else is out there, but um, also that we may have kind of digressed into a, let's defend Super Splash, not let's look at the parks as a whole. So, um, we're going to move on from the public comment section. And thanks for everyone that spoke up. Um, yes, ma'am. Uh, Steve, you asked how much we spent on that $100,000 we budgeted for repairs. Is it $13,000? Uh, as of July 31st, well, I just printed out the budget report, and it's dated July 31st. We spent $16,000. 16000 So we're keeping it. That was $150,000. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it changed right. it to $100,000. Right. That's right. Is that right? Yeah. The budget was $100,000. Yeah, we spent okay, 16000 of that. Thank you. I appreciate that. This is not 
specific thing. Can I just make one? Sure. Um, you have a difficult task here, and I, you know, that's, that's obvious. Uh, in my opinion, uh, for what it's worth, the citizens will not work out very much of an increase in money, if at all. The other thing, of course, is it did not help when whoever slid in storm sewers as part of the tax thing that was not common knowledge and was a sneaky thing that affected your funding. There's that. I also know that um, a separate committee that the mayor got put together kind of has addressed that. Um, so hopefully going forward that those things won't be as big a deal. So... All right. All right. So with all that, I don't have a report. I think I report out to everyone here. <laughs> um, maybe I could. Um, we get a secondary report. We <laughs> <laughs> get your backup. We get your backup Shoot. report, George. All right. How about a minority report? Uh, Danielle. All right. Personnel, Mr. Hammond. No all right. Finance for Mr. Cole. <laughs> Pat, do you have a report from program? No, sir. Mr. Later, do you have one from those on the ground? Right. Staff reports. Everyone kind of has Kevin's report. Um, that was kind of brought, so we're sitting out to the packets. Um, a couple of highlights. Um, Mary, I think you just have to amendment to his report the 21st, not the date that we're going for. So the meet and greet, is that right? No, it's 28. So, um, in your report, you guys have that uh, the Raytown Park Board is going to hold an exclusive meet and greet for the mayor and the Board of Aldermen um, on Thursday, July 28th, from 7 to 8. Uh, please put that on your calendar. Pool management and staff are going to provide snacks and drinks to the facility, lifeguard, demonstration support. Um, anyone interested in attending that, please let Marianne know by the 18th of July. Point of order. Uh, <laughs> point of order. And I know you don't want no public comments, but point of order to keep you guys out of trouble. That would be considered a closed session meeting with another public entity. And therefore, you have to open that up to the public or figure out how it, that it can justify one of the 23 reasons. And I'm sure every but you don't want to be in the paper. You really, no, you really don't. It's not fun. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the room at three at a time. time. So there's no agreement. Um, we, we've been eating every week. <laughs> so we yeah, don't do that. Thank you. We'll take that out for a minute. Don't invite the fire department. Could you meet and read the call paper? We're probably going to do that before. Even if you work towards solution, the the park is open. The park is open. I'll get back to you those invites to go out. Thank you very much for the point of order. Um, so again, uh, let's everyone know also the 24th of June, Red Cross conducted the first aquatic examiner annual lifeguard assessment. Uh, during that assessment, an anonymous Red Cross examiner observes and documents lifeguard conduct and skills, and so written report is provided with the results of the exam to be a quality uh, aquatic management. Typically, our staff and our lifeguards do extremely well on that report when they, um, when they make their pop up visits, so we're really proud of those guys there. Um, master plan, we're going to get into that later. Um, Super splash, typical pool season is about 79 days. Um, we managed to keep our pool expenditures down to about 13,000, which we've already uh, spoke about, which is again a 90% reduction uh, from the year prior. The city asphalt bill, uh, made, excuse me, there's bids going out um, for a steel project. It was open May 20th. Um, including in the bid are two park projects, one at Coleman to fix the walking trail with the crack field and seal coat, and also Canadian Park um, to try to deal with the West parking lot. 
So hopefully those uh, grants are, I mean, those bids are out there. We're hoping something gets done soon. Um, also, you have a capital improvement project of $50,000. Um, there's a low bid price for the Vance Brothers. It's at about $44,000. Need some change for both park projects. Those bids are going to be considered by the Board of Aldermen uh, tomorrow. Super splash right numbers. He, he looked right at me too. <laughs> He's been on vacation, so how time he got to me. <laughs> okay, super splash numbers. What we have right now, if we're looking at a week um, to week comparison. Again, you guys have that information there in front of you. I just thought you In comparing the 2016-2015 uh, total so far, uh, at this time last year, um, season pass, we're at 34,000 in sales last year, we're at 30,000 this year. Uh, we're about 30,000 in concession sales. Less than sales are about 7,900. Um, so we're about... This time last year, looking at about, what is that, look at, Harry, am I looking at this right? Before I speak up. I'm looking at the wrong thing, I apologize. I'm looking at um, expenditures versus revenue, I apologize. So, expenditures, I'm sorry, revenue from last year, this time last year, we're at about 76950 um, this year we're at about 138424 in revenue. It's about $61,000. This year in comparison to last. Getting that warm weather in 97 degrees also helps. Mm -hmm. well, last year was a growth over the year before that, too. Right. So, even with, even with slowly, the weather. Yeah, we that so, we're slowly going in the right direction. But again, it's slow. You only have to update it. This was as of yesterday at Super Splash. We had uh, attendance was at 20,374 compared to 13,000 this time last year. Birthday parties, we received $10,000 in revenue this year compared to 11,000 all of last year. So, on, on that. Season passes, we received 22,000 in revenue this year compared to 20,000 last year. And swim lessons were at 11,500 versus 10,800 last year. So we're up on swim lessons and we still have two more sessions, uh, one more session to go. One session. One more session. That is 160, uh, $140,000 number that we have to pay. That was for attendance, then I have revenue for birthdays and season passes and swim lessons. And swim lessons, what was the number in swim lessons yeah. again? I'm sorry. 11,510. So that's approximately, by the way, 40. So the revenue number that George talked about is probably pre-June. No, his was as of last week. Last week. Last week. Really Kevin's really been gone this week. So, yeah. Sure. Yeah, his report shows through the 5th week we're now doing something. Any questions with that? The trend is better. The trend is better. The trend is better. And here, even though we're suffering out there, the AI is better. That's almost um, Superintendent Ron. Yeah, Rick, right before. Uh, I think it's complete. I don't really have anything to add. I certainly have a question. Since it came up to the public comments, give it to me. Come in. All right, yeah, a little bit on the bond. The pond. Okay. Uh, the pond is really, uh, we call it a pond, but uh, public works folks would call it a catch basin or a runoff because that's exactly what it does. It's part of the retention system for the city. Um, there's a lot of water that runs into that pond, and because the neighborhoods, including ourselves, fertilize, it's nutrient rich. So that's very good for mosses and grasses and uh, geese are over there. So there's a lot of fertilizer, if you will, that will make things grow. 
the chemicals to control, weed control, uh, are very expensive, and it does you no good to put them in before the water temperatures get about 70 degrees. It will not be absorbed. So if you look at the pond today, it looks totally different than it did in June because that, that chemical has had time to work and control. So there's hardly any, at least when I looked at it last week, there's hardly any moss in it at all. It just takes time for this product to work. And, but so, I mean, I could dump it in in March, but I would get no effect. So it just takes time for everything to work. So we schedule the trial. Yeah, you have to. That's you know, what right. I said. But for an example, the, the chemical that we use is $700 a quart. Yeah. So it's, it's a very expensive chemical to use. But you don't want to look nice, so we use it to control the pot. Is there any way to make the, uh, uh, that, you know, the fishing thing later? It's possible, sure. I mean, that's something you can't do, like the next year is what I'm saying. Hopefully, though, by controlling it now, we won't have this blooming occurring next spring. You know, we'll hopefully we're ahead of it. But right. it just depends on how much nutrition you get in there and all that. Okay, I thought it was just like a weather thing, like maybe March. You said you couldn't put it in March because it wouldn't work. Right. So we put well, it in June. Really wet summer last year. Yeah. 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 Uh, one other thing, uh, I know some people have talked about aeration to help with that, and that is not going to control vegetation. That just adds oxygen to the water. Yeah, makes it grow better. Sure. One question. Um, is there any way to forecast that, like maybe in March or early April, so that the scheduling for the fishing event? That's what I mean. We can look at all that stuff. Yeah, sure. I mean, but you can, like, say, oh, wow, this is going to be a sure. bad year for it. Uh, no you, ahead well, of time. you don't know because it's all based on how much fertilizer you're going to run into it. You know, the dry spring, you don't have near the problem you have. You know, but you would know by it being a dry spring that the likelihood of it not being bad, bad is. Okay. Hope that helps. Any questions for Ron? Uh, well, I do kind of have one question. Uh, I noticed on the agenda for the Board of Aldermen that they're going to be talking about uh, sealing the streets and having some uh, sealing done at the parks on the walkways. And I have some photos here that I took at Kanegi Park when they sealed the streets or the i'm sorry the walking trails and y'all are welcome to look at these what they did when they came through and uh put the, the seal down on the walkways at kanegi park they just put it down right over the goose poop and i'm hoping that the next time that they seal the walkways at any of the parks that someone has uh, the foresight to clean the walks before they seal it. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm wondering, is this something that was supposed to be brought up here, or does it go to the Board of Aldermen? Uh, I think it's applicable places, Drew. I think, I think it really is, because it's a, it's a city bid. Um, so we're all kind of involved with it, but at the same time, we hope that with that bid, that someone would Oversee it? Either oversee it or say, Damn. you guys will kind of make sure you clean up the walking where you lay it down, right? But did you say they blow it up? He said typically. Okay, okay, sure. Public Works will run this contract. This is through their bidding process. I'll make sure I ask him. It's going to be contract. Yeah. So I'll definitely want to bring it to the board all from then. Just a simple push. Public Works director will be there. That's my job today. Kate Gonzalez. Any other questions for Rob? <laughs> hey. All right, I have a written report. Uh, we did a movie in the park just Friday night out of Canadian Park. The weather wasn't so very uncomfortable at that time, so we're glad to have that. The Raytown City Newsletter uh, will be coming out soon. We got our design for that. We will be on the front cover of that, the Raytown Arts and Music Festival. And we do have about four pages. Uh, for our fall activities. Uh, Ray, Ray Town Arts and Music Festival uh, will be coming along August 27th. Again, that's at Canadian Park, last Saturday in August, June to 7th. Hope you all come out. A really good show plan. Uh, the Raytown Baseball Association, they will be wrapping up. They only have one more event uh, towards the end of the month. And then we will be taking over. They will be winterizing and removing all of their equipment. We'll be moving our equipment in 
and then uh, leasing those fields to other practice groups. That's about it. Oh, I do have one more comment. Sorry. Uh, the Ray Tom Fishing Derby, we timed that with the statewide free fishing weekend. So I'm kind of tied to that. We don't necessarily have to do it then, but that is a free statewide fishing weekend. Nobody needs a fishing license, which is why we do it then. Thank you for being here today. Any other questions for today? All right. This looks like a new business. So, you guys don't mind, we're going to look at some different things. Um, so, everyone got in their packets a copy of the Park Master Plan and also the Recommendation and Implementation Action Plan. Um, hope you guys have had some time to look it over. strategic 
implementation or the executed version of the recommendation and handout. My question was why why have two separate documents? Why have the hard bound master plan, but then have this other thing off to the side that still talks about yes, the, why why not just include that in the master plan? That's the question that I have. I've gotten the response that you had given me and I'm still a little confused. It sounded like it's because of possible future legal reasons. He wanted it to be flexible. Everything that's in the, the staple together piece. And the question that I had was, what kind of legal issues is, the, is this master plan? Once we vote on it, is this something that's set in stone that this board has to abide by everything in this master plan and can't change it? Sure. That's the question I have. So the question very poses question. So. In talking to Jeff, he says that it has been his experience in working with other communities that once you put it into the master plan, that that's your plan, you're going to have to kind of work with it. But once you want to make changes to that master plan, you're going to have to have several votes, go back to the Board of Albany, et cetera, et cetera. So now we have a master plan that we're going to work on, that we're going to vote on, and then present to the Board of Albany versus having this working document here to give you the flexibility then as a department to say, here are the things that hold some people tangible and you can have some guidelines. And if you look at it, it even says who's responsible, start date. This would be like your working document. This is a little bit more fluid versus trying to work within a file document like this. That's been his experience over the last you know, couple of years. He's been working with this program and, and dealing with his business. So that's the reason that he has the separate document. I, I viewed this as it, exactly. I, this is document. What's that document? And then after going through, this is kind of the guidelines, the direction, the overall strategy. And the other document, which I've got some pictures on, this one is the tactics. The difference between strategy and tactics is it's got. Assignments of who's going to do what, when they're going to do it. We can hold staff accountable for making progress on it. So, this is a subset of what this is saying to me. That's how I read it. It's all part of one plan. Yeah. Is there anything in your implementation plan that's referenced in the master plan? So, if somebody were to come up later on, if we, if we were to pass this today, somebody comes up to the park board office and says, I'd like a copy of the master plan, they would be handed a copy of. And, and, and so that this is also, see, I think it's good. I mean, they could have a copy of it if we really wanted to, as far as just some things that we're working on. Here, here's the goal, because it is public, right? But I mean, by the time you look at it, it's going to be, you want to see that, you don't see the ebb and flow based on what we decided to do. Yeah, this is what we Because said. if revenue dictates that we have a Bumper crop year, so it's be as far as sales tax and whatever else. And we, instead of getting the 200000 that we're used to getting, we get, God forbid, 400000 We're like, woo, we can do a whole bunch of stuff this year. Let's do this. Versus, oh, wow, we've had some more recession and things are not really working out. And that TIF keeps getting into our money. Yeah. We can only do this. So then we have the ability through the implementation plan to say, let's prioritize and say, we're going to work on these five things this quarter. Let's work on these five things this year. So, this is almost like a good Yeah, I, I understand, but there's numbers in the master plan that are bound numbers based on the presentation that we got. This is going to cost this much, and we're going to need a sales tax to be able to pay for this if we want to do that. So, there's things in the master plan that I would think would be more appropriate based on the way you're describing it. And the other full out document, then it wouldn't be here. That's why I, I just have a little bit of a hard time understanding why. I mean, because for us to fund this, we're going to, you know, if we decide that we want to be able to fund this, we're going to have to come up with the money somehow. And we've, dis we've discussed different options. And actually, one of the other issues I had, I was going to hold off until after we were done talking about the master plan, it was even at, at the last meeting before we left, I asked because I was kind of disappointed that we didn't get to talk about that. Come up with a plan for Super Splash as part of the master plan, but based on if we decide we're going to go forward and ask for sales tax increase or not, and I've been asking that for a while, but the first deal that I see that I'm having a discussion, I 
escorted the meeting before we adjourned last week, and then I was told any concerns about the master plan forward through email. I forwarded through email. I've got this underlying email that I requested to be delivered by the time that this meeting is another meeting that it's not on the agenda. So, so I, I didn't mean to bring that in with the master plan part, but kind of all in with the discussion. So, yeah. gotcha. Anything else?
staff to take this plan and walk with it and figure out so that they can make recommendations for us. I mean, I, I think we're a policy board. I think we're a board that makes decisions based on what the staff says. I don't think it's this board's decision to sit here and start picking this plan apart and tell us, I think that's the staff's job. I don't have the education. That's that's my opinion. I don't know what the other maybe it's not appropriate to talk about that now, but maybe I, I don't know what the other members of the board feel like, but that's staff's job. Well, I have one agrees with Mike saying maybe one little caveat. Uh, strategic plans for the ports and reps department. We accept the document. Disappointed that part of what I wanted didn't make it in there. However, I don't, I mean, it, this has been going on for a long time. It's way over here in Vietnam. Um, I'll still, with the exception of the typos, I mean, I, I'm disappointed. I'd like to have seen a little bit more in it, but I, it wouldn't keep me from voting to approve it. Should I be happy to put more in it? Or more money? Well, yeah, I we keep well, sending them back every we time we turn down the recommendations and it keeps running the money up. We'll and everybody right wanted this done six months ago. So, you know, I mean, I if, if move this along, I'd like to call the question. <clears throat> what is the question exactly? Well, is that with the two typos changed? No, I just, I assume that, I guess I assume since the top draft learned and pointed out that the plan would be, re, would be reprinted, so I would do I would move, I guess, at the end that we accept the plan with the understanding of Dr. Graham's clear. I second. So I have a motion. I second. Any other discussion? This board. Thanks for vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes. Okay. So, um, anything else about the master plan? Okay. Um, Chris, you did ask for um, discussion when it comes to being able to lobby and fund anything when it comes to Super Splash. Well, mainly and I know that you had brought up the last um, meeting um, that you had visited with the election board, and I think it was going to be a cost of 5000 Oh, no, no, no. It was when I originally talked to Tammy, uh, who's one of the directors of the election board. She had estimated, um, she thought that this coming election uh, was going to be around 40, uh, 44, 45,000. You mean November? 45,000? Yes, 45,000. And that okay. was for, I believe it was for November. She was throwing several dates at me. Um, she did not get back with me last month. Um, I talked to her, I had been emailing her today. And I don't have any numbers uh, for November or later, but she said because they have so many things on the docket for August, it was only going to be like $18,000 if we would have gotten it in for August. But the, the general ballpark estimate she gave me was around 44000 She says depending on the election and what's going on, it could be less, it could be more. That's as good of an answer as I got. Okay. So far. Yeah. We can't, as a board, put anything on the back. What we can do is recommend to the board of aldermen that here's what we think would be good. And board of aldermen will balance that with everything else the city's got to do and make the decision whether to put it on a ballot. And then when, when the timing of it was, you know, who knows? I don't think November, you know, I don't think that's going to probably should have because it's a lot of work to do before then. So it's not just super splashes, it's still populism. We ask them for 
money, which nobody wants to spend more money, where are they going to get for their money? And if we say it's just super splash, or it's super splash and storm sewers, I don't think it's going to work. We've got to tell them something else. Uh, and, what, and I'd like to see something else. Well, I'm going to tell them something else, but I should do something. Exactly. Just tell them something. I think that's, that's the main thing I wanted to be able to just have something on the agenda at some point soon where we can talk about. Are we, you know, discuss it? What are we calling it? Are we bringing it up? For both, uh, what's involved in that if we do, and then also with, I think we can simultaneously talk about if we're not able to get that money for whatever reason, what do we get this money? Well, I think you're going to have to have that discussion in August or September. We always wait till December, or we can always wait until August. That's why I've been, you know, I, I think so the sooner we have it, and the sooner we can kind of sign hard decisions, the better. Well, if we're talking about pencils on the ballot, August, I think. Uh, no, no, we, we, there's I no met, way we can do that. I meant discussion with this poll. Right. And so, because even with discussion now, if we're talking about November, the 40. I think we had to have, to, to be able to get it on a November ballot, we had to have it in, we would have to have everything done and taken care of, the ballot wording sent to them by the end uh, or middle of August. Middle of August. Middle of August. So, and, you know, that's the other thing is we can decide whether we want to go forward with it or not, but it still has to get approved by the board law. So that's the way there's some investigating and talking to what we can do to go along. You know, we need more information while we're discussing these or as we go along. I can definitely tell you and share with you that uh, 3000 or less is more than... Yeah, I just passed around. Can right. I, just don't, 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 don't do it, there. right. Yeah. Um, 5,000 and up, we got to go to uh, city initially here. That 40000 that $40, range is definitely going to talk to the Board of Aldermen. And we're talking about something that extreme that's going to affect not only parks but other parts of the city. I definitely would want to kind of have a, a partnership with the city and say, hey, I know you guys are discussing some uh, funding streams. Can we discuss this with you and what we can do to kind of share some of these costs and get this on the ballot together? Um, and work in conjunction that way. So those would be some discussions we probably have to have. Um, also, as Mike said, as we're getting ready for budgets, that's definitely something that probably should be on the agenda for August, um, either as a full board, or even at the very least, the finance committee. Uh, we're going to new finance committee going to be uh, to compile that. That could be that, that we have to discuss properly. Yeah, sooner, sooner right now. So that way you can make some discussions and do the presentations with the board. We can then pitch that and talk about, you can talk about budget for next year and what's coming for like what we might say next April's calendar, next month. Any other discussion about that? Is that kind of yeah, that, that's fine. I just wanted to get the ball rolling. Uh, I've been a little frustrated because I know we've had a lot of presentations and a lot of things that were taking up time, but I, I to me, it feels like that's a priority to get this out of the way. Because if we decide not to, and I'm not saying that we will have longer than something to before, but you know, everything that we talked about for Super Splash and all the presentations, it doesn't matter if we don't have the money. So we need to decide. And then we need to sneak it the ball rolling. Um, also, if we could maybe, um, that might be on the agenda for August. If we have any questions for Kevin for the past board, or maybe some in between City Hall, if I ask some questions, maybe we can get one of our great yeah. job. Yes. <laughs> Which, yeah, point of order, I think we skipped over that one. No, we didn't skip over it at all. Actually, I um, moved the things around because I wanted to make sure we got the adoption of the past plan and get your uh, question answered. Now we're going to finalize the input for fun stuff. It's election time, don't you, girl? Um, so, I'm going to stop talking and I'm going to open up nominations for the office of president. All right. I'm not going to say Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> I thought you had to be on the board for a year. That used to be a rule. 
Uh, it's, it's in my handbook. I'm pretty sure it's still so well, with the weird. experience, I'd like to so nominate Terry Copeland. I think I can that. Got enough experience. There you go. Yeah, well, hold on. Let's back up. I have a nomination from Pat. Pat has been accepted or denied. Oh. I'm going to pass it. <laughs> since since well, since my point, 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 point of order didn't we change it several years ago? I think when I guess was yeah. elected there was a rule change. The handbook I received in December said to you have to be on the board of business. Yeah, I understand. So they may not have made it. That probably that's not what I said. But in any event, Terry did not make it. Been, uh, <laughs> Can I change my nominations since my nominee turned it down? You can nominate one second of the year, the second. Oh, it accepts. I would accept it very reluctantly, but I, 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 I nominated Michelle. Uh, congratulations on the order for Mr. Copeland. 
All right. So, <laughs> Vice President. I would nominate Michelle. I second that. Okay, wait, wait. Motion is called to cease nominations. I have a second. Yes. Okay. So, we will close this as a matter of principle. I think we already know. All in favor of Michelle being our vice president for the next year, raise your hand. Thank you. 